Greetings and welcome to our launch of the Remote ED Hub. I'm Jason Lane, Dean of the School of Education at the University at Albany, part of the State University of New York. For more than 20 years, the School of Education has been a leader in the provision of high quality online instruction, including supporting teachers to do the same in the K-12 setting. This work has led the school to be consistently ranked by U.S. News and World Report as one of the top 10 graduate schools of education in the country, providing online instruction. We want to leverage this expertise to support the work of our colleagues in schools throughout New York's capital region and across the country. But this is also personal. I, like many of you, have young children. My wife and I have become the primary teachers. They love to learn. They love school. My thanks to Ms. Furs and South County School District. But one of my greatest stresses is making sure that they continue to find joy in learning. Our faculty, staff, and students have a deep purpose and commitment to assist the special and urgent needs of teachers, leaders, and schools as they work to support student learning in this dynamic and unprecedented time. And today, I'm pleased to announce the creation of a new website, remoteed.org. Our commitment is to provide a hub to help teachers, leaders, and schools navigate this rapid transition to online learning so that teachers can continue to teach and learners continue to learn. And the site will provide a curated and easily navigable list of resources that will support teachers at whatever stage they are in beginning their work. In addition, we know that learning is, more, is about more than resources. It's about relationships, relationships to knowledge, relationships to students, and relationships to each other. With this in mind, we are also committed to providing a range of opportunities for educators at all levels to come together in community to collectively navigate this new reality. Starting this week, as part of the Remote ED Hub, we are committing to providing a networking and learning opportunity every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. This past Monday, the Capital District Writing Project hosted a virtual writer's workshop of inquiry into learning into a, in a time of COVID-19. My thanks to Professor Kelly Wisman and Chris Mazura, a teacher in the Gilderland School District and also one of our graduate students. It was a meaningful opportunity for those involved. On Tuesday, we hosted our first Twitter chat with participants from across the country. Again, the focus was on sharing, learning, and connecting with each other. And my thanks to Dr. Stephanie Afanito for her leadership and lending us her superhero social media powers. Today, we're hosting this session. And we'll do it all again next week and hope that you will join one or more of these opportunities. I want to emphasize that this is the beginning of a journey for all of us. The site will continue to expand and evolve as we respond to the needs of the field and requests from teachers. And the resources throughout Remote ED have been compiled by our faculty and graduate students. And there are many people that deserve our appreciation for their efforts, and I will miss them undoubtedly, but in particular, I wanna thank Stacey Brissett and Mark Freed, graduate students in our curriculum design instructional technology program, Penny Young in the Dean's office, Jerry Rivera Wilson, the director of our professional development arm, the Academy for the Advancement of Teaching, Leadership in Schools, Jason Vickers and Jean Wei Zhang, faculty in the curriculum design instructional technology program. Without them, none of this would have been possible. So now I'd like to let you know who else will be joining us today. Next, we'll hear from Dr. Hal Lawson about schools, child care, and family support in these challenging times. Dr. Jason Vickers will introduce the remote ED website and provide an overview. Dr. Jean Wei Zhang will provide tips for teaching remotely. Dr. Wisman. Dr. Kelly Westman will, will talk about our, our writing workshops and staying connected through virtual writing. And Dr. Stephanie Afanito will talk about leveraging social media to build community. Next, I'd like to turn it over to, to Dr. Lawson. Hello, everyone. And let me begin uh, by expressing our profound appreciation for all that you do uh, on the behalf of the colleagues who will follow me um, in this uh, brief presentation. You should know in advance that uh, not only do I have a joint appointment in the School of Social Welfare, AKA social work, but I'm married to a social worker. I have a son and a daughter who are social workers and there's another social worker in the family system. And so my view of the things that we're going to talk about is colored in fact by uh, social work's uh, uh, longstanding commitments to families, to the well-being of children, and all that our community and school institutions can do, not just alone, but also together um, in bringing about the best outcomes for children, families, and as we all know, when kids and families do well, so do schools, and our work is made all that much uh, 
easier. I also have the privilege and honor of working with an initiative called New York Kids. You, if you look at the School of Education website, you'll see a very rich uh, set of resources under the New York Kids umbrella. By and large, uh, New York Kids is uh, structured to study schools that might be called positive outliers. That is to say, they achieve better than expected outcomes, um, even though they serve uh, kids and families, many of whom are located in communities with multiple challenges. And so in fundamental ways, they provide us exemplars for all that we can learn of, about and begin to prioritize differently and better. One of the things that we've learned as we've studied schools, rural, suburban, and urban across New York State, is that schools uh, benefit, especially when they work closely with uh, families and community agencies. At the same time, we've discovered just how important it is to look at schools, not just as educative institutions concerned with academic learning and achievement and college and career readiness, but also all that they do to improve the well-being of children and at the same time supporting families. I know that it's uh, customary to think of the university folks in one world and uh, schools and uh, their dedicated professionals in another, but if you were in my shoes uh, over the last several days, you'd hear my colleagues talking about how they're trying to scramble to find childcare supports how they're trying to help uh, their children with their homework, and how they're trying to think about what their kids are doing in a healthy uh, and developmental ways uh, during the non-school hours. Uh, this, uh, the, the schools that we've studied with New York kids, those that are considered positive outliers, do amazing and even heroic things in the name of childcare and family support. They do so in multiple ways. Um, and I've tried to capture some of those examples in two blogs, that, one of which will be available imminently and the other that will be available in the near future. One deals with uh, how, um, uh, what is now obvious as we proceed with this presentation, schools um, uh, support folks with, uh, with childcare and, and positive youth development including all that many of you do to make sure that young people are engaged in productive and health enhancing and educative activities during their non-school time. No small amount of this happens at school sites. And many of you have been instrumental in helping young people get involved in co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Some of you work as boundary crossers and boundary bridgers with boys and girls clubs and YMCAs and other community organizations. Still others of you work very closely with parents trying to get them genuinely involved in their kids' education, but also coming to understand the challenges that obtain for parents who are working. And at the same time that they worry about income supports, they're trying to make the parent teacher conference. So all in all, uh, what this uh, crisis with, uh, COVID, uh, with the COVID virus provides is an opportunity for us to begin to think about how what we've learned so far and how many of the things that we do that are currently undercover can become an explicit and formal part of how we think about school improvement, school uh, student success, and all in all college and career readiness. And with the reminder that the more that we ask educators and schools to do it all and do it alone, at the same time that the kinds of challenges that we're only beginning to appreciate mount in, in our surrounding school and community environments, and there are gonna be many of them, the more it's important that we reach across toward other professionals and develop innovative work, ways to work with um, families, particularly parents, and out of school time providers to achieve mutually beneficial outcomes, the likelihood of which uh, for achievement um, it would be diminished insofar as we continue to work in relative isolation. I'm on call and on contact to uh, be of service to any of you who would like materials or resources for all of this. And once again, thank you for all you are and do. Thank you, Dr. Lawson. And if you want to read those blogs, they will be available on the New York Kids website and a link will be available on the remoteed.org website as well. 
So now let's talk about the resource that we are establishing to help the communities, because as Dr. Lawson mentioned, we are about a systems approach to education and that we are all in this together. On the Remote ED website, what you will find is well over 100 curated and free references to learning materials and material on online learning with more yet to be added. Every day we are adding more. There's an ever expanding hub of educational resources and, and information that's being uh, accumulated on information about how to teach remotely. How do you set up a remote classroom? Content that is curated by grade level and content that is curated by subject area to make it easy for you to navigate the rich array of resources that are being rapidly developed on the web. We're also developing resources about self-directed learning, uploading to YouTube, collaborations platforms, and advice to, uh, that you can give to students about how, to, how they can navigate this era of remote education. As I mentioned earlier too, there'll be links and resources to connect with each other in real time through our, our community building resources. And we'll have a running blog about the past events so that you'll be able to look at previous cheat, treat, uh, tweet chats and videos like this that are being uh, put together over the coming days. Now what I'd like to do is turn this over to Dr. Vickers to walk us through what the website actually looks like. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Vickers. And today we're going to review the website that we have developed, the Remote Education Resource Center. The URL for this is remoteed.org. Now, this is the website that we have developed. As you scroll down, you will see that we have two starting areas. We have a where do I start? Jason, a, just quickly, we're seeing your notes, not the website. How about now? I'm still seeing your notes. I apologize for this inconvenience. Let me reshare my screen. I have three screens, so this sometimes happens. There now, we go. Yep. Okay. This is the Remote Education Resource Center, as I said, and this is forever under development as we or it's an ever-changing site as we aspire to add more and more resources for your benefit. When you scroll down, you'll see two starting places, one of two. You can go to the where do I start, or you can go to the let's get started. I'll circle back to that in a moment as I introduce the rest of this main page. When you scroll down, down you will see that we have our building communities, weekly connections with teachers. As you can see, we have the upcoming March 23rd already listed in this upcoming event. And then we have two prior events listed. These, change, these dates will change each week as we introduce more opportunities for you to build communities. When you scroll down further, you'll see our resource archives blog from the week, weekly connections. So this is a blog that we, that we will archive all of the information, all of the Twitter chats, all of the Zoom connections that we have. So you can go back and peruse them at your leisure. And further down still is the Get in Touch area. If you would like to see correct additions or updates to the site, you can email atlas at albany.edu down here. To scroll back up, we have the where, where, do you, where do I start and the let's get started. We're going to start with the where do I start area. The where do I start area will get you getting started with remote education. As you can see, there's a left-hand quick link section that has where do I start, get started, the common guide, resource by grade, resources by subject, and other resources. On the right-hand side, we have the menu. To, to navigate the menu, simply click on one of the menu items, and you will see that we have a wealth of information on how does remote teaching work, for instance. Further still, we have what do I need before I begin to, before I move to remote instruction? On the left hand side, you'll see the Atlas ED and the UAlbany University School of Education information, the Facebook page, the Twitter page, and the YouTube page. We will be adding the Facebook page for the remote ED website. Now we're going to go to one of the sections just so you can see what it looks like. We'll go to a resources by grade level. 
as you can see, we've got the elementary elementary school grade level as, as the first menu items. And in order to navigate here again, just click on the menu and you will see that there are different resources that we have listed under here. Some of the resources aren't complete yet as we aspire and we strive to add more items. For instance, this art, well, this art is actually populated with information and this music will also be populated. Uh, that site was in the resource by subject area you'll see that some of these sections have a coming soon. But for the most part, this site is populated with information that you can peruse at your leisure. So once again, this is an ever changing site that we will be creating and adapting for your needs. If you have any questions or concerns or, or recommendations for what you would like to see on the site, you can click on the atlas at albany.edu email at the bottom. Thank you, Dean Lane. Great, thank you, Jason, for that overview of the website. And as he noted, this is something that's continually a work in progress. And so we'll be adding more resources, invite you to send those to us for review and possible uploading to the site. Now, as part of the site, we talk about the ways in which teachers can move to remote teaching. So with us today, we have an expert in this, Dr. Zhang Zhang, who's going to briefly walk us through some tips for teaching remotely. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Jin Wei Zhang. I'm an associate professor of specializing in learning sciences and technology. Uh, have you just followed uh, Jason's presentation of the site and share with you some thought about how we may use the resources there and the different kind of the tools to actually support children's learning remotely? So if you, if you look at the current ways of school's responses, uh, at the elementary level, most schools are uh, doing some minimal level of uh, remote learning so that uh, the schools can keep the uh, student engaged at some basic level. Well, uh, at a higher grade level in secondary, uh, middle school, high school, uh, children are, are going through some more formal and organized ways of online learning teaching. Whatever format, whatever ways of support are available, a basic important principle to keep in mind is that in this time of social distancing, students and teachers need the kind of support to really build strong social connections more so than ever. Uh, toward that goal, we need to use all kinds of remote learning resources and tools available to create a distributed learning community. So, uh, we can connect with the students, their families, their local families. And in doing that, keeping in mind the issues of equity and inclusiveness, knowing that in difficult situations, not all families have the resources, technologies, and even parents available to support their kids. So in the site, you will see that we put a lot of information about understanding the different levels of connections students can have. Uh, so we can select the options that can really support different student needs. Uh, following this, I'm going to share three major points about how to build a learning community uh, remote. So number one thing we need to do in creating a learning community is to have a shared spirit of trust, care, with a real sense of a connection. So to do that, in everyday communication with students, Teachers may not only just talking about uh, schoolwork and assignment, but they really make the connection real and personal. So how can we do that? In the Google Meet, Zoom, or Flipgrid, we can show ourselves our image and not only talk about the work, but actually share personal stories, feelings, our favorite music. We can keep the music on in the starting a Google meeting. And even our pets can be in, in, the, in the view. So that make the connection more personal. And also we can share fond memories from the classroom uh, using photos from uh, the past. So that gives us a continuation of how we are building the connection with kids. So number two is build a shared focus and expectation uh, so that all students have a basic kind of a level of expectation about learning, about engagement, and about the level of support available. 
So be mindful about what kind of expectations are realistic in the current situation. We may define two levels of expectations, minimal level of learning to be continued for all students, and some kind of additional learning that students can do if they can strive for with uh, resources available. And we can be clear about what kind of work they need to produce and uh, where they will submit it and when. With the clear guidance and expectation, we can encourage the student to manage their own learning and connect with their peer along the way. So this is an important opportunity for us to use all kinds of resources and tools available on the remote ed side that we can uh, share with the student to build the connection along the way. For example, there are Padlet, Flipgrid, Blogs, and Google, uh, Google Forum. And along the way, I want to particularly emphasize that using all the resources available to build connections and support student sharing, not only share their idea of their thought related to the curriculum and content, but that we can also be more creative. Think about all kinds of learning activities we can do with kids and with their family. So I want to, uh, at the end of the, my talk, I'm going to emphasize the importance of thinking out of the box and really think about how we may turn the pandemic into opportunity for authentic learning. Students may join the meeting to share their idea questions. They may write journals. They may do flip grade or other kind of projects. Here are a few sentence starters that we may start the dialogue or create their post. For example, students may write about, I learned, I wonder, I will. I'm concerned, I think, we can. And maybe I want to thank someone and they did this and we should or I should. So keep that kind of level of connection uh, in the ongoing sharing to build the real dialogue with students. So I hope that everyone will be able to uh, use the site to think creatively about what kind of learning opportunities we can create for students. So I'm gonna end there, thank you. Great, thank you, Dr. Zhang. I appreciate you providing that overview and for everyone uh, who is watching, that there's this and much more that's available on the website to help you think about how do you move into this remote learning space. Now, as Dr. Zhang talked about, connections matter and, and, and connections with students as well as connections with each other. And so we're gonna hear from Dr. Kelly Wisman and talking about the ways in which we can use writing as a way to, be, to maintain our connection with each other. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Lane, and hello to everyone. I'm Kelly Wisman, an associate professor in the Department of Literacy, Teaching, and Learning, and the director of the Capital District Writing Project, a site of the National Writing Project. Every Monday at 4 p.m., we will be hosting online gatherings, which we are calling Connecting Community, Teaching Within a Time of COVID-19. During these one-hour Zoom calls, we will engage in our signature practices, of writing and sharing together. We will provide the writing prompts and some structured opportunities for participants to share within small groups. We are inviting all educators and school leaders uh, to join us as we seek inspiration, connection, and community. You can register for this upcoming Monday's call through the link on the website. And we just want to thank you and we look forward to writing and learning with you this Monday at 4 p.m. and the Mondays that follow. Great. Thank you, Dr. Wisman. Uh, so a great opportunity to come together with your colleagues synchronously, both to write and to share and to, and to connect. For those of you who may be more attuned to the social media setting, we have an option for you also. I'll turn now to Dr. Stephanie Afanito. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie Afanito from the Department of Literacy, Teaching and Learning, here to share a little bit of information with you about our new weekly Twitter chats. Um, as schools have closed and teachers have worked tirelessly to move their teaching online to stay connected with their students, they're turning to social media. And you've likely seen your flood um, your social media feed flooded with teachers who are coming together to share ideas, to share resources, and to help each other out in this challenging time. 
And so we wanted to carve out a space in social media where teachers could come together to sustain their community and collaborate together. And so we are offering a weekly Twitter chat on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. to help teachers come together to do just that. Um, we'll have consistent questions each week where teachers can talk about what's happening in their world, what's happening in their schools, and what they might need for support. And because every day seems to be a learning experience, um, we're asking teachers to come to the chat ready to share the lessons that they've learned so that they can benefit our entire community. Um, right now, we do post the questions a few days in advance. If you'd like a little bit of time to prepare or you'd like to schedule your tweets so that you can more fully participate in the chat itself. Um, and we'll be using the hashtag um, UA Remote ED. Um, our hope is that by helping teachers come together in social media this way, we'll help kind of wade through the resources that are there and sustain a, a community and a culture of learning, even from our homes rather than our schools. Great. Thank you, Dr. Afanito. And to find out more about these sessions, both the writing session, the tweet chat, and as well as our, our Wednesday learning sessions, I encourage you to go to the Remote ED website. We'll be placing more information uh, there as well. We'd also encourage you to follow us on Twitter as we post out additional information about this or join us uh, on our, our Facebook uh, group, uh, which you can re uh, reach here or just search for Remote ED on the Facebook site. With that, we thank you for joining us. We thank you for all the work that you're doing. Um, we know that we are in this all together. Education is, cl tr is clearly a, a system. We take a system approach to education, and we want to make sure that we are collectively working toward maintaining the learning of all of our students at, at all levels. Be safe and be well, and we look forward to connecting with you soon.